Hey everybody, uh, my name is Brock and thanks for coming to Reengage tonight. I'm here with Deidre Wilson and Deidre is a licensed counselor, is a licensed marriage and family therapist. And the one thing that's cool about Deidre, she's going to talk to us about something that's going to help out our marriages, but she and her husband also went through Reengage. And so Deidre, what is like, if you were talking to the folks in the seats, which you sat in at one point in time, like right over there is where yeah, you sat. Yes. Um, what would you say, like your experience or one thing you really gained from Reengage that would be helpful to encourage people? Well, Matt and I got a lot out of Reengage, but I think one of the main things was we were reminded how important community is. Yeah. It's so vital to us. We just can't do it on our, on our own or by ourselves. And in fact, after um, our class ended, we transitioned from our Reengage group to um, a life group. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So community is a big part of the healing process then for any marriage is yes. what you'd recommend. Okay. All right. So you work with couples all the time. And so if there was one thing that you kind of like, man, if I could really make sure I'm helping people understand this about working with couples, what would that be help us out with that? Okay. So. Well, most couples come to counseling wanting their partners to change. And ideally, it's important to focus on your part of the contribution to that problem right. rather than your partner's shortcomings. Studies show that one's ability to manage or to react effectively when there's some upset is not optional, it's mandatory if you're gonna have a satisfying intimate relationship. Okay. So one key to, to managing that upset is, is managing your physiological arousal. Okay, so when you say arousal, I, I'm sure it's not me. I'm sure it's people out in the audience think, th think something different when you say arousal. What do you mean when you say arousal? So when I say physiological arousal, I'm yeah. talking about that internal disruption, the anxiety that you might feel okay. when uh, there's a real or perceived threat. Okay. So okay. Your, your emotions start to get a little out of whack yes. a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. You kind of feel it building, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, why why is it so important for us to kind of begin to get a grasp of dealing with that that emotion, that physiological physiological arousal when Good. it happens. So it doesn't roll off the tongue. No, it does doesn't. It? No. So it's important because research shows the more physiologically aroused you are, we tend to hold our breath or breathe very shallowly. Well, the more you hold your breath or breathe very shallowly, what happens? You're not getting good oxygen to your brain. Okay. Well, when that happens, we um, don't think as clearly as we think we're thinking. We don't communicate as accurately as we think we are. We don't hear as accurately, and our memory is off. We don't recall as accurately. Okay. Right. So it affects everything. It will affect every part of your conversation with your partner if you don't do a good job of managing that arousal. So I think a common problem amongst couples, and I know it's a problem in my family as well, is when we're on the road together because we like to critique each other's driving styles. Mm -hmm. So... So in those moments, if I feel like we're going way too slow in, an, in a certain speed zone or something like that, I can start to feel some uh, some emotional reaction taking place. And so you're saying that there's this is actually not just an emotional thing that's happening to me, but it's a physical thing that's happening to me. And so I have to respond in a physical way or I'm probably going to become a jerk exactly. acting out of that. Yes, oh, yeah. there's some, there is something really going on inside of you. It's a, it's a biochemical reaction to this intense stress that you're yeah. feeling, yeah. right? And so your body releases these hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, that just flood your system and it causes physical changes inside of you. Okay, so it's important for me then to, since this physical response is happening, I need to have a physical response to kind of get myself in a spot because if I stay at that heightened level of emotion, arousal, mm -hmm. physiological, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I can really say and do some harmful things. And exactly. So, so what do I need to do to kind of get myself physically to kind of get back to a spot where I'm not going to be a jerk? Mm -hmm. So here are some common signs to look for okay. what you may be experiencing in your body to indicate your arousal is increasing. Yeah. Right? Okay. So um, obviously a rapid heartbeat or your heart racing is mm -hmm. a real typical one. Um, you might feel sweaty or kind of flushed. Maybe your, your chest gets red or your face turns red. Yeah. Um, you might notice a dry mouth or a lump in your throat. Sometimes it's um, tension, muscle tension or a headache. Mm -hmm. It can also be tummy issues, yeah. kind of nauseous or butterflies in the stomach or a lump in the pit of your stomach. Yeah. So those are some of the most common So something signs. physical is off. You can obviously yes. know, hey, if something physical is off right now, I'm probably getting close to danger zone here. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And so what you want to do to, is to kind of be aware of that. I, I like the scale of using 1 to 10. At mm -hmm. 1, I'm calm, cool, and collected. At a 10, I'm so so irritated, so frustrated, I can hardly see straight, right? right? And so I, I go internally and say, what am I feeling at a two or at a four? What does a six feel like based on those symptoms we just discussed? So, so if I'm in the car 
we're going a little slower than I'd like to be going. One of the things that would be helpful to kind of internally just start, not out loud probably is a good idea, right. but to internally kind of identify like, man, I'm getting a little stressed. I'm at a four mm -hmm. or, okay, I can, I'm really probably in a dangerous spot. I'm like an eight or a nine right. or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because the key is the sooner you recognize where you are, mm -hmm. you can intervene on your own behalf. Okay. Right. And you'll have yeah. more success at calming yourself down yeah. rather than continuing to escalate. Because it's not... It's my job if I go because I can't control another person's behavior. I have to control my behavior, and so I'm trying to look at my own behavior and like I'm in a dangerous spot. Now I can start to kind of calm myself down a little bit because I know, hey, I'm I can identify I'm at a seven. Right. This is probably not going to go well because when you're at that state, usually things don't go well at all. It's usually right. bad. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so if you were wanting to talk to your partner about their driving in the mm. moment, doing it at a, at a three or a four, you're probably going to be more successful. You're yeah. probably going to make it easier for her to hear and care about what right. you're saying than yeah. if you wait until you're a seven or an eight. Because I can't even hardly monitor at seven or eight. I'm just going to be, right. I'm in full on jerk mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. I okay. bet that doesn't happen very often. No, though. never. <laughs> never at all. Every day in the car. But I mean, other than that, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so, some common ways to kind of calm yourself down, right? Mm -hmm. I, we use the word, uh, the term self-soothing. Okay. So, one of the most common ones is to be intentional with your breathing, right? Because mm -hmm. we've already said we, we're probably holding our breath or breathing yeah. very shallowly. As and it's a physical issue, so I have to have a physical, res exactly. physical response to get me to calm down. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's totally going on in your body, right? Yeah. So taking some slow, deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. Mm -hmm. If you can, close your eyes and think of, you know, maybe your happy place. Yeah. But put that on repeat. Slow, deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. Just keep doing that, mm -hmm. right? So it's my job at this moment to kind of, I got to get myself down from this number. So that's what I'm focusing exactly. on me. Yeah. Exactly. You're not yeah. even having the conversation with your partner at this okay. time. Although you can do this while you're having the conversation with yeah. your partner. But if you haven't started that conversation, I would do this first. So it's probably not a good idea to say to my wife, hey, I'm breathing really loud because you're really bothering. That's probably not a good. Probably not. Okay. I don't know. I want to throw that out there. <laughs> I haven't so. tried that yet. Okay. Yeah, probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So while you're breathing, also pay attention to what you're thinking. Many of us tend to think escalating thoughts when we're in this you know, heightened state of arousal mm -hmm. rather than de-escalating thoughts. Okay. So rather than thinking things like, you know, my partner's a jerk or, you know, my partner doesn't understand me or doesn't care about what I'm feeling, mm -hmm. right, or what I'm thinking, rather than saying those kinds of things, think de-escalating thoughts. Okay. You know, this is a process. I'm working on this. Yeah. My partner is my teammate and really does care mm -hmm. about how I'm feeling and really does want to hear, you know, what's on my mind. I can make it easier or harder for that to happen. Yeah, and this is an, an issue that we're discussing. I'm not trying to attack this person, so how can I get back to issue mm -hmm. kind of maybe related thoughts or something like that? Exactly, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then finally, if you can, you know, physical activity is a great way to release that pent-up energy mm -hmm. and anxiety. Yeah. So if you can, um, go for a walk or a jog or do some push-ups or jumping jacks. That mm -hmm. can be helpful. Sometimes um, engaging your other senses. That could be petting your dog if mm -hmm. you enjoy that. Or if um, if you like, you know, really good scents, mm -hmm. right? Like for me personally, I love patchouli oil, my essential oils. So oh. I pull that out and take a, a big whiff, and I'm immediately in a different place. Yeah, I like to pull out some oils <laughs> as, as well. So. Yes, yes. So, so really kind of what you're doing is like getting yourself an opportunity to calm yourself down and sometimes – by moving away from that moment and going to do something, because you know if I go into this thing at this heightened state, like a seven or eight, it's not going to go well. But if I can go and calm myself down, I at least then have a chance to come back and communicate in a more loving, kind way with my partner. Exactly. And so one of the things that I've seen happen a lot is that couples might identify that, like, hey, I'm at a seven or eight. Mm -hmm. And so, hey, and they might just might even kindly, hey, I'm not going to behave very well right now. Mm -hmm. I'd love to treat you with honor and respect. Can I give, give you a few moments here? that the other partner sometimes feels like that person's never going to re-engage mm -hmm. with them. So what advice would you give that? Like, hey, if you need to get away for a moment and the partner's in there feeling left out, how would you work through, navigate through that? That's really important. So if you hit pause during a conversation and say, hey, you know, I'm at a seven, can we come yeah. back to this later? It's really important you circle back. Because remember, the purpose of this is not to get out of or avoid these difficult conversations. Right. It's about just giving yourself time yeah. to calm down so you can circle back and, and do it more productively, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's important that you follow through with, with the agreement mm -hmm. and come back to that in 20 minutes or this weekend or after dinner, yeah. right? And and pick it back up again. Yeah. And so, um, 
And if you come back and it gets heightened again, and you just can't ever get to the spot where it's unheightened conversation, that's probably the time to go see, hey, let's make sure we're in a group setting when we talk about this, or go see a therapist, or go right. have a pastor, just to, somebody just can kind of navigate this so we can keep ourselves- To facilitate that, To sure. facilitate that right. stress level of getting up, so. That's exa- that's, a, that's a great point, Brock. And, and really, this gets easier the more you practice. For a lot of us, these are emotional muscles that we don't practice mm-hmm. every day. And yeah. so this is really hard when you first try it, but the more you do it, it gets easier and you get better at it. So when I'm in an argument and I or I'm feeling frustrated, it's just I'm just kind of in my head. I'm kind of going, all right, well, how do I take care of me in this moment? So I'm working myself down, doing all these things, and so I'm not focusing on winning this argument. I'm focusing right. on presenting my best self for this argument. Exactly. Okay. Right. You're in essence, you're making it easier for your partner to hear and care about what you're saying, mm-hmm. and that helps make this a win-win conversation that you're going to have. Instead of a lose-lose, which is typically when you're what happens at a lot. high level. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, so. What happens if we need to, really do need to have a conversation that's very difficult to have with our spouse? What are some ways to kind of approach that? If we're down at that calm level, mm-hmm. what are some escalating or de-escalating things maybe we could do to have that conversation go well? Mm-hmm. So if, if it's ahead of time, yeah. right, if it's before the conversation. You know this is conversation's coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Really check your own readiness mm-hmm. first. And you can also check your partner's readiness. But it's really important because if like if I'm anticipating have a con- having a conversation when my, my husband gets home, if I'm thinking about it all day and my anxiety's building and I'm working myself, when he my working myself up, when he walks in the door, I'm probably going to be a seven or eight. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm not going to present my so ideal. So already self. it's going bad. Right. Yeah. So I, you really have to be intentional about calming that down ahead of time before ever initiating the conversation, mm-hmm. right? So a lot, so really what I'm hearing is just a lot of it is is physical and also kind of some mental preparation. Mm-hmm. But, man, if we're in that spot, we just have to make sure we're physically calming ourselves down so that we can we can present. So exercise is not a bad thing, going for mm-hmm. a walk, mm-hmm. uh, maybe you know, get aside just saying a prayer so that we feel ourselves calm down, mm-hmm. whatever it would be, just kind of be, right. be better in that moment. Exactly. Okay. Um, do you have any... You're a therapist, right? Yes. So all of us know that therapists are absolutely perfect. Oh, yeah, but far do you, from it. Do you have any like examples where you've done this well or not done this well in your mm-hmm. marriage that would be helpful for us to hear about the perfect world of a therapist and her husband? Oh, sure, so, sure. I think where this really shows up for Matt and I is, is um, our family. So we are proud parents to several four-legged kids. Okay. Our four-legged kids, right? Dogs or aliens? Uh, b- okay. <laughs> Dogs and uh, cats. Okay, okay. Which some would say are aliens. Yeah. But um, so... Oftentimes, we have different preferences when it comes to caring for them on how best to do that. And mm-hmm. so we still struggle with how to get on the same page with that. Yeah. And so very often, I'll have to kind of check myself and, and before I initiate a conversation about something that, that I think he did, you know, that mm-hmm. I wish he would have done differently or yeah. worked with me differently on. And I have to really do exactly what we're talking about before I bring up that conversation with him mm-hmm. so it doesn't all fall apart. Yeah. So just kind of knowing there's difficult, I'm preparing myself, get myself uh-huh. ready for that. Uh-huh. And okay. that's an ongoing Right? It yeah. happens like on a weekly basis. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, this is really an important issue because I think so many times there are legitimate needs that conflict mm-hmm. in a relationship. Mm-hmm. We need to have conversations. And we both have different ways of viewing things. And if we're just at that escalating spot where I think it's so important to identify, it's no, hey, I'm if, in a, if I'm in a danger spot, I probably shouldn't be having this conversation. I've got to make sure, but make sure I'm circling back to have that right. conversation with my spouse. Right. It's so important because so often... You know, couples will come into the office and they'll say, "We we go around and around on this topic, and we're, we're not ever able to make pro- not ever able to make progress yeah. because their arousal gets in their way." Yeah. And there could be a fairly simple solution mm-hmm. to the problem. Yeah. Um, but they're just unable. They they get in their own way. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else you would like to add at this moment, or is, uh, is that a bad question? I should have just no, asked on no. camera. There. <laughs> <laughs> I think that couples who are able to grasp the importance of this yeah. and really shift the focus. We talk about in re-engage staying in your own circle. I yeah. think this fits really great into that. Yeah. Staying in your own circle and managing yourself well, yeah. then you can, you're more likely to have a successful conversation about any topic with your partner. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thank you guys for, for listening tonight. And, and Deidre, I just want to thank you for uh, going through re-engage and so all the things you've done, because we have a lot of folks that have come to you and you've really helped a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And so thanks for all you do to support re-engage and help marriages and everything like that. And thanks for even taking the time today to to do this, and hopefully the interview wasn't too crazy, but uh, I appreciate everything you do, and thanks for helping us identify so that we maybe oh, can yeah. treat our spouses with love and respect. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you, Brock. All right. Thanks, guys.